Welcome to Chow Bella Living Italian Style. I'm your host, Barbara Ann Zippy, um, and I've been bringing you my adventures in Abruzzo. Abruzzo, a wonderful part of Italy that my family's from. Uh, my mother's mother and father are from a little village hilltop in uh, the seaport, uh, top of the seaport of Pescara along the Adriatic Sea. And um, there's always something fun happening in uh, Loreto or any place. And as we're getting into any time of year, really, but now that COVID's lifted and uh, we're traveling again, Italy is one of the biggest destinations that we travel to. So not only us, but people from all around the world, um, it's one of the top destinations worldwide for tourism. But I'd like to give you a couple couple secrets. One secret that I'm particularly particularly fond of. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I'm connected to uh, a gentleman named Al Alberts. Um, Al Alberts used to be a lead singer with the Four Aces. And then for years and years, he had a television show called Al Alberts Showcase um, out of the Philadelphia market. And this show is brought to you by um, Radnor Studios 21 Mainline Television in Pennsylvania. So um, I'm telling you this because when Al was the lead singer of the Four Aces, he had a very famous song, Three Coins in a Fountain. And everybody that, oh, here on the picture, uh, on the album cover, is Al and his wife Stella at the Trevi Fountain um, in Italy. And so they made this a, a hit record in the 60s, maybe the late 50s. Anyway, in now, when you go visit the Trevi Fountain, there's a secret to be to the Trevi Fountain. They made a discovery of the underground uh, areas of the water flow of the Trevi Fountain. So not too long ago, um, they were doing development. A private developer um, was going to build a new thing near the Trevi Fountain, a new building, and they came upon ruins. And when you when you come upon ruins in Italy, um, you have to go through a lot not to destroy them. So this company ended, entered into a public-private partnership and they actually um, excavated and turned into a tourism um, tour that you could tour underground of the Trevi Fountain to see the water flow. So if you're vacationing any time in your future and you're going to the Trevi Fountain, it's a little known, it's called the City of Water. It's underneath the Trevi Fountain. It's a little door beside the Trevi Fountain. If you go to the Italian American Herald and ItalianAmericanHerald.com, I write a monthly column called Chow Bell Living Italian Style. Go into the digitized March 2024 issue. Pull up page 20. Okay. Pull up page 20. And page 20 will give you a photo look of the inside of the city uh, of water under the Trevi Fountain. It will also give you a picture of the entrance door so that you can know what you're looking for. Um, you can have a self-guided tour under there or the tour can be um, 
uh, with a small group of people. You shouldn't need reservations. You should be okay with that. Um, but if you go and you enjoy the tour, drop me a line and let me know. But um, so look for that in one of your travel tips. So a little bit again, um, I just showed you the Italian American Herald newspaper that I'm involved in and it's in English. Well, this, their counterpart is La Cerba and La Cerba is an Italian newspaper that covers the Abruzzo region. And you could go to, I believe it's lacerba.it <clears throat> and you can, no, no, go to La Cerba on the Facebook page. That's better. And they publish their Facebook page. They publish their stories and that'll lead you to their website. But the surprise that I wanted to um, tell you about La Cerba is my hostess, the first picture here. My hostess, when I go live in Loreto Aprutino, is Antonietta, the beautiful smiling face in the middle of that photo. And Antonietta, um, who will have a special 90th birthday coming up in 2024, she is my grandmother's niece. And um, she, I don't speak very fluent and very good Italian other than some of my grandmother's dialect. And she doesn't speak any English, but we make it work. We make it work through the beauty of some translations. But anyway, um, Antonietta is surrounded by her three daughters, the Nobilio sisters. Carl is in the back on the left-hand side next to me, or I should say right-hand side because uh, I'm looking at the pictures differently. And in the uh, front, flanking uh, their mother is Rita without the glasses, her daughter, her eldest daughter, Rita, and Simona, the youngest daughter with the glasses, uh, my invaluable translator on all my journeys. Although all three sisters have shown me the most amazing things in Abruzzo, and there I am behind them. So the thing special about Antonietta and La Cerba, if we can turn to me next. So this is La Cerba's newspaper. I go to the village. This is September of 2023. So I'm in the village this past winter of 2024. Come upon the newspaper and find that my friend, the owner of La Cerba, does, did this story on Miss Loreto. This picture has been hanging on Antonietta's wall in her dining room since I first visited Loreto Aputino in 1976. So I open the newspaper and I read the story. Now here's a tip on reading the story, okay? Um, of course, these things are in Italian, but if you're ever faced with that, on our iPhones today is a Google Translate app that's free. And you get download that Google Translate app and you put your phone over this page or the story or the paragraph or menu if you're at a restaurant. And Google Translate on your phone will show you the English words of the words in the story. It's the coolest thing. When I was having, I took my Italian cousin Irene and her 20-year-old daughter Raquel for brunch, a famous American brunch, uh, different than you get in Italy. Eggs, pancakes, French toast, chip beef. So we were at uh, the Flight Deck Diner in Cape May, New Jersey. And I asked Raquel if she needed me to explain any of the dishes. And she started speaking to me in her English, which they all learn in school. And she started to tell me that um, what she wanted for breakfast. She was the one who introduced me to this Google Translate app. So for all of you older uh, viewers out there like myself, the 20-year-olds all know how to read multi-language. Google Translate can get you through anything. So anyway, go back to Miss Loreto. I 
uh, was in the in a conversation uh, with coffee one afternoon with John Luca. We could go back to La Cherba, uh, the owner of La Cherba's newspaper. And I said to him, John Luca, I need another copy of September 2023. I said, I'm living at the house of Miss Loreto. So the story is that in the early 30s, 1930s, they had a contest. Antonietta was the very first Miss Loreto. So um, we're going to be bringing you in a future um, uh, rendition of Chow Bell Living Italian Styles, future episode. We're going to be bringing you a little bit more about the history of uh, Miss Loreto and a uh, tour of the house that's still in the village where she was born. And you can see the village is Loreto Aprutino, uh, high up on the hillside, um, is where um, Antonietta and the Nobilio sisters live. And then um, they blessed me with a room on Antonietta's house. And um, um, it's an adventure. So when you uh, are watching one of the future episodes, we're going to bring you some history. And it'll be fun because I didn't realize I lived with Miss Loreto. And none of the Nobilio sisters knew the story behind the picture that they grew up with in their dining room. So this was a big surprise to all of us. In in America, we would know that the picture in the newspaper, uh, when they named the woman uh, who she was because she takes on her husband's last name in America. In Italy, the woman keeps her maiden name and the three sisters have the name of their father. So when they were doing the story, even though John Luca knows all the Nobilio sisters, Antonietta's last name is not Nobilio, so even he didn't know. So I'm excited that we made a discovery. I told our Italian counterpart who publishes his newspaper, and uh, we're going to do some exciting uh, things together in the future. In the meantime, Loreto is a little um, hilltop village on the top of the seaport of Pescada, Monte Silvano, on the Adriatic Sea, Franca Villa del Mar. Um, it's uh, the coastline for most of the people who own um, and live in Italy. They go there for their summer vacations. And Loreto Aputino is up the hill. But there's another Loreto. And I would always hear about it when I was growing up because when I would call a travel agency and say, oh, oh what accommodations are there in, in Loreto Aprutino, they would bring up hotels in Loreto. Well, if, if we show you this map, Loreto Aprutino is in Abruzzo below Tiramo. You see Tiramo in the middle of this map. And you see where it says Abruzzo. Up on the top corner, you'll see where it says um, the house of Loreto, the holy house of Loreto. And that's actually in a different province. And it's in the province of Tiramo, and it was about a, an hour and a half ride to get to the other Loreto. So one day, I think you could start showing some of these pictures. One day, my cousin Irene Achavati said to me, oh, I want to take you to the other Loreto. The other Loreto is known as the Shrine of the Holy House. This is the courtyard. This is the front of the church in Loreto, the Shrine of the Holy House. And if it's... Uh, uh, this, we were too late for mass at that top part of the prior picture. We had to go to the mass entrance below. If you could see the size of the people and then the tower on the left, it was an absolutely amazing sight to walk into this holy house. Um, now, inside this church, in the main entrance, this is the inside, is a little church, four walls. 
Here's the little church that was thought to be brought over by the angels from Nazareth. Okay. It's and it's known as the home of the Black Madonna, and she is in that gilded gold. Um, this, these walls were thought to be the home transported by the angels, the story goes, and were brought to this site. And then they built this giant cathedral around it. Now you could see the walls and the stone uh, of the inside. People are lining up to go up to the Black Madonna. Black Madonna has a tale about being involved in a fire, um, but it was just um, magnificent. Then that was what all the people were lined up for. And then this was the wall going out of that room. I'm going to show you the outside of it shortly. And you walk, we're continuing to walk out of the little house that's inside this big um, shrine of the Holy House of Loreto. Now, if you see the, the wall in front of those people, that is the outside wall of the Holy House that we were just in. And you can see that it's inside the cathedral because at the top in that dome where the blue is, is the, the cupola of uh, that section of the church. So um, this is indeed, here's a, a closer look um, because of course the carvings are magnificent. But this is the outside wall, and you see the doors to walk into this little house, in this little holy house inside the big one. Um, there you go is another view. And do we have, there we go. Okay, so I'm in another archway looking at a different angle, and you could see the corner. You could see the right wall and the left wall um, that come to a, a point uh, through that arch. Um, and this was one of the confessionals that um, was in the cathedral uh, away from um, the public. And then, now, we looked at the little house's shrine, but in this church, these are all altars that are on the sides of that church. Inside, but each individual entrance for a different altar. Many of them had uh, holy water uh, that you could um, take, and they had um, places where you could drop petitions. Um, these were how they rang the bells, um, an old fashioned water fount that were font that we're all accustomed to before COVID, they were overflowing with holy water. Um, now the funny thing, I took this picture because you see the modern technology of the screen, you see the, the pews, most of the pews in the cathedrals there are portable. So uh, they had just started moving them back in because of after COVID, they took them all away during COVID. Um, and that's a great shot of the outside of the Holy House. You could see prominently that it's a small house within that cathedral. And there's the front altar all carved out. The carvings in the marble are magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. And this is the shrine of the Holy House in the other Loreto. They have, uh, you could get audio, sign up for audio in any language. And I think it was only one euro. Very interesting um, thing. And uh, you can see that there's at least four languages there that you were able to try. And the literature was absolutely amazing because all those little pamphlets were in every language imaginable. Not just the four that you saw on the audio, but so much more than those four. Um, this was the doors to get into the church. Um, and in 2025, that's going to be a jubilee year in Italy. Most of these churches 
have gold or bronze doors that only get opened every 25 years. Um, if you happen to go to Italy during the, the year of 2025, uh, make sure you go through a set of golden doors in one of the churches or three if you can. You, you, you know, uh, earn plenary indulgences, pardon my pronunciation, um, but it only happens every 25 years, so it is special. But the doors in Italy are humongous, and these these doors at this cathedral were even extra. So I was telling you about the um, the magazines. So of course I took them in various different languages and um, it is the shrine of the Holy Church. Um, and then they had all smaller uh, things that could teach you what the um, what the not myth, not fable, because it's a belief of the Catholic Church that um, how the Holy House was transported in the years that it was transported, what the story of the Black Madonna is. Of course, it's related to uh, the Virgin Mary and um, and have wonderful um wonderful blessings and connotations with it. When you go to visit these special places, the admission is free. Um, actually, I've uh, there was a font that had free holy water. I brought a couple small little packets of holy oil back to the United States. Um, but if you ever get a chance to look to visit the other Loreto, uh, you'll, you'll um, be in for a beautiful surprise. In Philadelphia, in southwest Philadelphia, there's actually a parish, and it's called Our Lady of Loreto in southwest Philadelphia. Um, and I haven't been there yet. I haven't been there yet. Found an old article about that church, Our Lady of Loreto, and never really put the two of them together. But when the Italian immigrants used to come over from the southern part of Italy, which is basically uh, um, the border of the southern part where the, this holy house resides, they were laborers and bricklayers and stonemasons by trade. And when they came here in the early 1900s to the United States, they turned out to be the stonemasons that built the churches in Philadelphia, that built the monuments in Washington, that built many of the structures in New York. So in the early 1900s, there was a wealth of Im immigrants to the United States from Italy, not necessarily not necessarily looked upon as um, wonderful newcomers. Actually, they were looked upon as the labor force, the low income labor force of the day. Uh, so in today's world, 2024, we have immigration of of a new set of generations uh, of, from different places in the world. Through the years, the United States has seen blocks of immigrants come here, and um, we're all here. That's why the United States is called the melting pot. Um, but but the Italians came in the early uh, 1900s, late 1800s, when the exodus started where they left Italy to make a living because there was no income potential. Shoot ahead to 2024, so many, uh, with technology today, so many of the young people could stay around their hometowns and get good jobs and, and, um, and the small towns are slowly surviving. Or you may have heard that some of the slow towns um, are selling property for one euro. There's a lot of those stories on YouTube or in the newspaper. Of course, the one euro uh, is a bit um, low, but you do have to put an investment into the rebuilding of those homes, most of which are in medieval sections of cities, uh, these little hilltop 
villages, but manageable. Uh, there's also renovated houses to buy. And uh, friends of mine moved to um, from Delaware County. They didn't move permanently. They bought a second home in Loreto, Apertino. Um, and it was under a couple bedrooms. Uh, we might do a little story on them in a future issue from their home in Loreto. But it was under $40,000. So, and they didn't have to do many renovations to that home. So... Um, today in 2024, it's an interesting country to visit, has a, still has a lot of new discoveries for us to uncover as tourists. It's an interesting place to um, visit your ancestors' villages, which is a new thing that people in the United States, uh, the younger generations, are wanting to start to see where their roots are. And then you have people that are going back and forth and actually buying homes in, in Italy. Um, and I think it's a good thing. So if you have Italian in your blood or your roots um, have some Italian ancestry in it, explore it. Uh, we haven't touched on any food dishes in this issue. We touched on um, the other Loreto. And if you're ever in Italy, please um, make a point of trying to make your way there. It's well worth your while. And it's a beautiful, uh, calm serenity to look at the walls and the structures that are ancient and that are still here. When you think of the United States uh, in 2026 celebrating their 250th anniversary year, and you go to Italy and realize that we're selling, celebrating history and buildings from 2,000 years ago, um, you get to know just how new the United States is. So we all have a lot to learn every day. We never stop learning. Uh, I wish you well. And um, until we share our next adventures in Abruzzo together, I want you to listen to my cousin Roaldo Achavati's, um group of musician friends. They play wonderful folk music. Um, if you ever have a chance to see them live in Italy or America, please do so. These guys haven't traveled to the United States. So if you want them at your upcoming Italian festival or event, drop me a line at Child Bella Living Italian Style at gmail.com. In the meantime, as you're watching the credits, I want to thank my director, Kevin, for all his hard work work on this show and um, stay tuned for future episodes of Chow Bell Living Italian Style while you listen to the musicals, folk music stylings from the musicians in Abruzzo. Ciao Bella. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.